Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we are going to continue our discussion on collecting vintage petrol lighters. I am going to categorize my lighters pretty uh, rigidly into three different categories. I'm also going to show you or point out the lighter which I believe has the greatest potential value growth for the future and hopefully put a finger on the one that of the lighters that I am willing to sell, the one that I am least likely to sell, most likely to hold on the longest. There are some that are non-negotiable. We've talked about that before, but in general, other than a handful, they're all for sale. And of that group, I'm just going to hopefully put a finger on the one that, well, I guess I'm telling, I, I'm trying to say, I'm going to show you my favorite. I sort my lighter collection, at least in my mind, and I have somewhat got it laid out here on the display stands this way, into three different categories. One would be gifts that have been given to me. As you probably noticed in the short that I published after the part one of this video, uh, I was pointing out that the lighter, the JDH uh, Zippo lighter that was given to me by Gavin Lannon, that one is not among those that would be for sale at any price. That is one that is a, among the permanent collection. If I get down to a handful of five or ten lighters, uh, you can guarantee that 1995, I believe it is, uh, Zippo that Gavin gave me it, with the initials JDH. It will be amongst mine, whatever my collection, however severely limited it, it may become, that JDH lighter will always be a part of it. But I do have other lighters in that category. There are a few butane lighters that are actually a couple of butane lighters in the background there that were given to me by my son. Uh, those won't be for sale. I, you guys know how I feel about butane lighters. I use them every day. So there's a good chance that if I can find somebody to uh, work on those that I will uh, get those repaired. Actually, one of those works. It's just the Zippo Contempo that doesn't. If I could find somebody to repair that, I would. If not, maybe one of these days I finally get around to uh, branching over into butane lighters, whatever the case may be. But for now, that is uh, sitting over toward the side because it's not a tool that I can use. And it's also, um, uh, it's not working. It's not in working orders. So... There are some reasons that some of the other things are to the side, maybe because they didn't particularly fit in the case of the Cygnus table lighter. It would have obscured everything around it. It's so tall or anything you tried to put behind it. And also the ashtray lighter, trench type with the base of an ashtray that is pretty unique. I've never seen another one uh, even really similar. I've seen a lot of trench type made out of shells and ashtrays uh, integrated into them, but never one like this. Other light, other items that I would put in this category would include the red crackle ashtray that belonged to my grandmother. As I didn't purchase it, it was a gift to me from my mother, along with a handful of other ashtrays, which I probably need to do a video on all of those ashtrays that she gave me that belonged to my grandmother. I use them, I use the others on a daily basis. They weren't uh, quite so condition sensitive as the paint on this red crackle portable ashtray would be, which reminds me, uh, Brian Prophet commented under the part one video and said that he had a ashtray, one of these portable ashtrays that had belonged to his great aunt, and that he had almost thrown it away at one time, but decided to keep it. Man, I would never throw any of this stuff away. Anything that you find that is tobacchiana related, um, smoking related, 
And that's going to get us back around to what I promised at the first of this video, that I'm going to reveal to you the lighter which I believe has the greatest potential to grow in value over time. And that's going to be the Zippo Marlboro Red Box with the Cowgirl on the Mechanical Bull which actually is not a part of my collection or it won't be as soon as I put it up for sale on eBay. I have already determined and made arrangements and come to terms with Dylan DePie so uh, this lighter will be in the mail to him tomorrow assuming that all goes well. Uh, well I say tomorrow I'm making this video on Sunday, late Sunday afternoon if uh, I get it listed tonight and it's up on Monday, then I'll get it out in the mail to you today, Dylan, if uh, we've got all that taken care of. We'll see how all that works out. And that gets me around to basically the third of those categories. I still haven't got told you the second one, but the third one would be those are lighters that are just interesting to me. Not any, they weren't given to me. Um, they don't necessarily have any sentimental value to me. They are just lighters that I like, and that's sort of what tobacco advertising is to me. There's some sort of sentimentality there, some sort of nostalgia. Uh, I smoked Marlboro Reds. I smoked Marlboro Menthols. I smoked Camels. So anyway, all these brands mean something to me. When I quit, I was smoking Parliament, so Parliament means something to me. Those are nostalgic, but I wouldn't really say sentimental in the case, or at least like the case of category number two <laughs> of my sorting system here for my personal collection which category number two are basically going to be lighters that were purchased by me but do have sentimental value the Smirnoff lighter I've talked in that video and in a couple of others how much sentimental value that has to me because basically because of a hunting trip and a night where uh, my dad uttered some famous words and we never let him live it down. The 100 Pipers lighter as well is a sentimental lighter to me that I purchased. I'm not real likely to sell any of those. I don't know. They do have value. I could definitely turn a profit on those lighters. But those are lighters that I purchased. Uh, well, maybe not necessarily at the time. Maybe there was an interest, but until I got them in my hand, maybe I didn't realize. The 100 Pipers, yes. The Smirnoff, no. I wasn't really thinking at the time when I purchased the Smirnoff, but maybe that's because that was kind of when I was in that transition from strictly buying to sell to, uh, all right, maybe I can collect and sort of keep a few of these aside for myself. So those are the three categories. Gifts that have been given to me. Um, as I said, the lighter that Gavin gave me was a gift. So were the ashtrays that my mother gave me. Um, the lighters that belonged to my dad, the Crestcraft. Those were all lighters that I would consider gifts, uh, inherited, what, however you want to put it. Um, I did not spend my money on those. Somebody else took the time to give me those and... Um, for a particular reason. So that's the one part of the category right there. Gifts, those are always going to be a part of my personal collection. Then number two is the purchased by me uh, and they have great sentimental value. Smirnoff, Hunter Pipers in case of my my dad or my uncle, the Jack Lighter, Zippo Slim, um, I never have told that story on this channel about why that lighter is so important to me. It too relates back to my father and um, the likelihood of me selling any of those. Somebody would have to offer me a ton of money. But, you know, like I said, those are lighters that have value, but they're not necessarily, you know, they're not just ultra rare. Nothing that just breaking the charts as far as dollar value but they certainly have great value to me as um, they bring back a lot of good memories of the men that they stand for. There are plenty of lighters in there that um, relate to my dad. My dad was a Ford guy. He would be ashamed of the way what has happened to Ford 
over the last decade or so, but uh, he was a Ford guy, and um, so the, it always makes me feel good to see these Ford logos on lighters, and uh, something that I'll always be interested in. And I've spoken about that. I've written about that a little bit too over on the website. Um, what I do here, I really am salvaging lighters that are on the trash heap. They are they've been discarded. They have been trash for someone, but take one person's trash, maybe there's a nick, maybe there's a blemish. Here's a nice uh, continental flip top ad lighter. Very stylish for you to carry around. It's got a Zippo pipe insert in it. I am salvaging these things from the trash heap. I'm not buying brand new boxed lighters in general. By the way, my favorite would be either the Semper High or possibly the Bob Dylan double-sided Tur Merch lighter. I really can't put my finger on it at this point. I'm a salvage guy. That's what Dad and I did with the cars back in the day. And um, that's sort of what I'm doing here as I buy. I don't spend much on any of this stuff. Some of it has great value and some of it I make a lot of money on. Um, but the stuff that is in my collection, most of that I didn't spend hardly anything on. I did buy one this weekend, that I, uh, a park lighter that I spent over $30 on. That's the most I've spent on a park and I look forward to making that video for you later this week. But in general, um, that is my philosophy, and um, there are those that will never leave the collection, and then the rest, as I said, are they're all for sale. It's just a matter of uh, if anybody wanted to pay the price that it would take to rip them out of my hands or convince me to take the pictures, put it on eBay, and let you buy it, as Dylan finally wore me down with the Marlboro Cowgirl light. Until next time.